What up, and welcome. It is Tuesday, April 3rd, 2018. And welcome back to another episode of the Necronomicon. Today, we are going over the Anunnaki in H.P. Lovecraft. So, um... This video wouldn't be possible without the help of Warlock Asylum, whose dedication and research have made this path just a little bit clearer. So today, we will be specifically looking at a few names and see just how, or try to, see how they tie into Lovecraft. Personally, I as a Lovecraft fan am a bit skeptical. Uh, nothing against the fine work from the Warlock Asylum, but for me though, mm, let's find out. Now, if this is all true, then I shall tell you my tale and experience of Exogthoth, or the entity that came to me proclaiming to be him. And performing miracles for me? Now, you might want to go to page 166 of your Necronomicon and uh, go to the Sleep of Ishtar, because that's where we'll be focusing. Got my notes, by the way. Now, uh, before we begin, you're, if you're new here, you're probably wondering, who are the Anunnaki? Why do they sound familiar? Well, that's because, one, you ever heard of a conspiracy theory? Mm -hmm. Especially David Icke. Um, and then you might have heard of that oh-so-famous event that never happened in 2012. Uh, the planet Nibiru that was supposed to fly by, or Planet X, Wormwood by the Christians, that was supposed to... Yes, it's thundering, and yes, it's raining. Perfect timing, uh, if I say so myself. It was supposed to fly by, knock the Earth on its ass, and cause polar shifts, and... All kinds of wacky death and destruction. Now, the Anunnaki, depending on what circle you're in, are aliens from Nibiru who have come to Earth to mine gold for their planet, which was dying, because the gold they needed was to... Uh, fix their atmosphere, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, we can all agree on that the Anunnaki are a group of deities uh, in the myths of the Sumerians, the Akkadians, the Assyrians, and the Babylonians. And apparently the Hittites as well. Now, depending on your view... They are aliens. Uh, they are the ones from the sky. Uh, they are the royal ones. Um, now, it's a bit contradictory and inconsistent in the lore and the myth between these nations on just how many there were and what their purpose was. Well, like I said, depending on some circles uh, who go with the alien theory that they, uh, you know, came here to mine gold. Now, I can kind of believe that just, like, there's, like, different species. Like, uh, if you've watched uh, Predator, Predators, the movie Predators... Not, I mean, it's not Predator 3, but it's technically Predator 3. Um, if you've ever watched that movie, 
you notice there's two species of predator. There's the classic one that we know and love. And then there's the bigger, uglier ones. Uh, which are just a tad stronger. Who pick on the classic ones. Um, I love the movie, even though I don't consider it Predator 3. Predator 3, in my mind, is a different movie from the original script a long time ago. So, it's believable that, you know, the Anunnaki could have many species. It's also possible that there could have been more than one alien race. I view them as aliens, honestly. Anything that's not human, uh, or known to human uh, knowledge, anything that's foreign is alien, basically. Um, so it is possible that there could have been many species of aliens, or demonic aliens, interdimensional beings, uh, call it what you will, um, that have came to Earth so long ago. It's very possible. Uh, like I said, I personally believe that they are aliens. Um, if you've seen my um, my demon playlist, uh, I give a classification of what I believe of demons, and uh, there's I believe that there's extraterrestrial, and then and then there's interdimensional. Now, these lines blur. Uh, but, uh, in my experience, the spider demon was interdimensional and came from, uh, name 19, if I'm not mistaken, which is, uh, Surin. So the spider demon was an interdimensional demon. Um... Basically, uh, their only purpose that is, you know, generally thought of was their digging for gold. Um, I'm going to go down to number four, actually, because uh, four and five deal with number three here. Um, depending on... Actually, I'm going to go to number five. Depending on the myth, the Gigi were the ones who pushed the Anunnaki into the underworld. Uh, and they were considered the new gods. Uh, the new gods of heaven. And they pushed the Anunnaki into the underworld, which coincides with the Hittites, who have their myth of putting them as the old gods being banished into the underworld. Now, uh, how gross is this? <laughs> uh, so when we go to Inanna's descent, the Anunnaki that are mentioned, uh, the seven Anunnaki judges, to Ereshkigal, uh, according to the Babylonian uh, myth, uh, they were underworld deities, and the again the Agigi were the gods of heaven. So hopefully, I'm making sense so far. So if we go to the ones that were listed, specifically, 
which was Azog Thoth, Cthalu, Ishnigrab, and Eok Sakak. Now, it is mentioned within the Descent of Anana, the Anunnaki, a couple of times. Uh, when Anana was fleeing from the underworld, There's a quote here. The Anunnaki fled their thrones. Now, each one of these had a throne. There's a page two here. So, yeah. Now, Warlock Asylum says that Nair Lothotep is in there. As the faceless... Uh, God... No, wait. See, they were kind of all over the place. Uh, like the eye on the throne of uh, Azagdoth, which is in junction to Nyarlathotep's form in The Haunter in the Dark as the three-lobed three burning eye. But, uh, that's... We're not doing that. Just like Ostor is mentioned earlier in the book. And he's pretty much... He or she, because it's a unisex character. Um, uh, deity, sorry. Which is pretty much... Uh, Hastor. I was about to say Ostor again. Hastor by uh, Robert W. Chambers. Yeah, The King in Yellow. Which Lovecraft borrowed. Made it his own. Just like Stephen King did. As an, om as an homage to Lovecraft. Which was an homage to Chambers. Uh, if you have Netflix, and if it's still on there, which I think it is, look up the movie Mercy. It has the kid from The Walking Dead in it, and Dylan McDermott. Uh, it is a fleshed-out version of Stephen King's uh, short story, Grandma, which is a mythos story. I highly recommend it. Uh, the movie is all about Hastor. So, I highly recommend that movie. I'm not the biggest uh, Steve King fan or Walking Dead fan, but uh, the kid did a good job. And, uh, but that's a different story. So, let's get to Lovecraft's characters. Azathoth. Cthulhu, Shubnigaroth, and yogg -Sothoth. See how similar they are? According to Lovecraft, Azathoth is the center, he's the nucleus of everything. He's gone by the blind idiot god, uh, the mad god, who knows not, no, he does, he does not, he, he does not know of his own creations. Uh, there's a, a thing in there in the Simon book about the hideous music, which is the hideous flutes that accompany Azathoth. Um, now, it is to note that uh, Warlock Asylum puts Azogthoth as Nurgle. Uh, Ereshkigal's husband in the underworld. Now, I'm not going to go into all of that, but it also goes with other entities. So, which is which, I do not know. So, Azogthoth could mean various other entities, as well as it could mean Nurgal. And 
Again, I don't know if I buy that. Again, nothing against them. I like that they were trying to uh, make the connection. But personally, again, I don't know. Cthulhu, or Cthulhu, Cthulhu, which <laughs> they, they messed up in the Descent of Inanna story. They had Cthulhu, and then they changed it to Cthulhu. So, uh, we all know Cthulhu. Big, giant, green, uh, indescribable horror from beyond the stars from a planet orbited by two dark suns. And... Um, pretty much an octopus with a dragon's body. Uh, some depict him with a tail. Who came to Earth, did some shit, <laughs> and then his city got sunk to the bottom of the sea, and can only emerge when the stars are right. Which is to note that any attempt to summon Cthulhu before said stars being right results in catastrophic destruction. Um, so he's in his city of Relay beneath the sea. Dead but dreaming. Remember that. Now we get to Shub Negroth. Ah, uh, yes. Shub Negroth. The black goat of the woods. The goat with 1,000 young. Who mysteriously. goes either unisexed which basically does the same thing as Oster basically but Oster kills so but Yag or Shub Niggeroth um, gives birth to a thousand young obviously she's a black goat which mysteriously looks like Baphomet, or the Goat of Mindy's. Mysteriously. Which is also a unisex creature. Uh, but Yogg-Sothoth... Er, Yogg-Sothoth, yeah. Shub Niggeroth. Uh, only with her followers, if you know what I mean. From my un understanding and point of view. Uh, Yogg-Sothoth. Yogg-Sothoth is the gate. He is... He is the gate. Nowhere of the gate. All things are one in Yogg-Sothoth. Nothing gets through without him knowing. So pretty much he is the gatekeeper. Oh! My Mufukin! God damn it. Hold on. I know what you're thinking. Will, Karos, what the hell is this Mofukin? Well, I will explain that later on. In another video. Not related to any of this. Okay, where was I? So, we all know, if we're all familiar with H.P. Lovecraft, Yogg-Sothoth is the gate. If we, I'm sure if we all know him, we've all read or heard the Dunwich Horror. Now, there are connections throughout the Simon Necronomicon, and here's some examples. Again, these are loose, but uh, starting with Azogthoth, which is mentioned 15 times. 
and mostly blind and mad Exogthoth reared up. Now that's taken straight from uh, the sleep of Ishtar. Cthulhu, dead but dreaming. And then from the story, lurched from or lurched forth from his sleep. Ishnigarab is mentioned variously. Uh, I picked two of her best ones from the article uh, from uh, Warlock Asylum. Like I said, they really helped with this. Uh, this is like the 18th time I tried to do this video, and so far, this is the best one. So I'm citing my work, so... In case anybody wants to, you know, pull that shit on me. I'm citing my work. I'm telling you that I got it from... I, And I even quoted it. So, you can't get me on that because I'm quoting that shit. Nothing against any of my uh, Black Tower viewers or anything. Nothing against you guys. I'm talking to newer... Witches, basically. SJW Witches, if you will. Um, who get all uppity about giving credit where credit is due. Um, like I don't know that. You know, people today. Anyway, uh, Ishnagrab. The first one is mentioned from the second testimony. And similarly, those of Ishnagarab and the awful offspring of the goat. Uh, the first one is from, because I did this ass backwards for some reason. Uh, the second one is from the invocation of the Shamash Gate. Ishnagrab is scorched black by the rays. Black go to the woods. See? See the connection there? And finally, uh, Yaksakak. Now, this one is, again, all over the place. Um, except for this one's a little bit different. Instead of being the gate, he is the gatekeeper, he is the gate guardian, he is the watcher of the gate. So basically, like Yog Sothoth, but not Yog Sothoth. Like himself. Like I've always met. Actually, I can draw it for you real quick. Uh. Let's get into a little bit of my mind when I do my rituals. Basically, draw the moon here. Night sky. So we have the night sky. Yeah, you can tell I was doing this. The night sky. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. have me. So when I'm doing the ritual, uh, I imagine that there is a
So, so this is basically what I basic. This is what I imagine, or this is what I visualize when I do my working with uh, the fifty names. And I wish this would stop. God damn it! Sorry, folks. Uh, so basically, when I call upon whoever, you know, I visualize a gate opening and then coming forth and that's basically how I visualize everything um, which actually is not that bad uh, with this version uh, with Eoxacock um, quoted the gate whose guardian is Eoxacock they bind uh, there's more to it, but I just took that little part of that. And another quote, that they may watch the gates of the Absu. The gate of Tiamat, they watch. The gate of Kingu, they oversee. The gate whose guardian is Yaksakak, they bind. So, basically, from my understanding... And from what I was reading, he's basically the guardian and watcher of the gate. Uh, if you've ever seen uh, Sailor Moon, the classic, or just Sailor Moon in general, uh, Sailor Pluto stands at the gates of time. And that's pretty much how I am picturing Yaksakak. You know, an actual entity standing there you know, watching the gate, protecting the gate. Now, the fun part. Is there any connection between this and the, uh, the Anunnaki and H.P. Lovecraft? Is there any connection? Other than what similarities were given... And considering that uh, ancient Mesopotamian archaeology started in the mid-19th century, um, I'm not really sure. It's possible he may have been influenced. Like, I have my own theories on H.P. Lovecraft, so... Which I can do in a total different video. It's possible. And then there's the theory that, you know, uh, Lovecraft channeled these entities, wrote about them, you know, and that's what his mythos is. Like, there's so many possibilities. But. there is a small chance that this was possibly influenced. Now, if anything, it would seem that they were influenced by Lovecraft. Because like I said, the only Lovecraft connections in this book were to help make it sell. Because if you took all the Lovecraft bits and bobs out you'd be left with, like, what the hell? Now, uh... There is a lot of, uh... thought into how Lovecraft, you know, has influenced the actual magic community. Supposedly, you know, he, uh... He got the, uh, the ritual style 
uh, pretty damn close to the actual ceremonies of a few. Now, this isn't a book that I kind of want to read, so I believe I mentioned it earlier in the other video. Uh, the Let's Talk video. If I don't. If I didn't, I will let you know. Or if I didn't, let me know. But like I said, uh, there's similarities, but it's too hard to tell. It's like, who came first, chicken or the egg? And being the Lovecraft fan that I am, and people, you know, stereotype me as this, so... Clearly. Although lately it's been evil dead. But. I. It's possible. I don't think it is, but. Personally, but. It's possible. I mean, you may think otherwise. The fine folks at Warlock Asylum think otherwise. And that's all cool. We all have our opinions. So, I mean, I'm trying to do this the best I can. It's hard for me to actually explain it. Uh, because for all we know, these entities, these Anunnaki, can go two ways. That means if Lovecraft did channel this, you know, that means his whole mythos <laughs> or, you know, the Anunnaki. Like his whole mythos pantheon is practically Anunnaki. Except for the, uh, old ones, which are Earth-based, I believe. Like Sathagwa and Dagon. Or it could have been that, you know, Simon and crew, you know, were like, hey, these guys have similar characteristics to a couple of characters out of this novel. And this novel. I have an idea. <laughs> Let's slap a sticker on it. Uh, the HPL sticker. Like the movie The Void, which is clearly an homage to Lovecraft. Slap a HPL sticker on it, and there you go. It's considered a Lovecraftian movie. I hope this made sense in some way, shape, or form. If you have any counter, any counterpoints, or you want to s discuss your own uh, thoughts and opinions, please, I welcome this. As long as it's con uh, constricted, yeah. Constructive. It's like 4 o'clock, I want to go to bed. <laughs> so, I mean, let me know what you think. Tell me I'm wrong. And at least explain it to me why I'm wrong. You know, civilized way. But, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, before I go, um,. Figure I might as well just tell the story. So, dealing with Azogthoth, or Azathoth, depending, 
Uh, sometime during 2016. He showed up in my life. Completely unannounced. And he did something. He performed a miracle for me. And after that, he showed up in. He showed up again. <coughs> this time, in a room similar to what is described in the Dream Quest of Unknown of Unknown Kadath. Which is a throne room, black and white. A throne with two spheres on the side of the armorists. Now, this entity himself, uh, who proclaims to be <clears throat> to describe him. I wonder if I can find that picture. Because that's the best way I'm going to describe it. But basically... He was... <coughs> black... Shadowy... And, uh... Was holding... Basically two... Uh, orbs of energy. Uh, this is going to be all the way down there, isn't it? And he spoke to me that uh, I can't get it exactly right, but I will say that, you know, uh, I'm going to paraphrase. Said, basically, he was saying to me that uh, I need to stop thinking about failing and just do it. Um, something like that. It was actually pretty encouraging from this entity that may or may or may, or may not be a Zogthoth. Which... You know, if be true, could have been uh, that whole archetypal thing. Do I personally believe it was, if Azogthoth is Azothoth, do I personally believe that was him? Well, considering the fact that uh, this entity has heard my prayers and has answered them being the only uh, entity or not entity but being the only deity to ever come to me outside of Ereshkigal um, getting close But, uh, considering that, I just might think so. Whether he be Azathoth himself or the Anunnaki equivalent to a fictional character. Which is possible. But, uh, this... This entity... Is the... Male... Uh... Patron god of mine. If 
face. Whew, this is all the way down there. So, yeah. Ah, here we are. Here we are. Basically that. Just without the, uh, the red eye in the middle. Uh, but all black. So. That is what came to me in the astral. Twice. Once was to perform a miracle. For a situation that was dire. And the second one was to tell me, hey, stop failing and just do it. Don't worry about failing. Which at the time when he told me this, uh, things were okay. But, uh, I mean, he's right. But, uh, I don't know. Um, which is odd because I do say, you know, <laughs> as a thought, as a name, like, instead of, you know, the Christian God, I put as a thought in there. So, technically, if Exog Thoth is Azathoth, but, uh, I don't know, I'm weird, but I'm going to end this video because this video went, went way too damn long. Sorry about that. So, uh, be sure to click that little bell icon, stay informed. Be sure to uh, read the description box below. Sometimes what doesn't get made into the video gets put there. Sometimes I put funny things like, you know, like an it thing I did a while back. And you can also find me at the various links. So, uh, yeah. Um, if you're new to this video, head on over to my channel check out my other videos and if there's anything you like feel free to subscribe come part of team awesome and if you've missed an episode of this series uh, the playlist should be somewhere around here and uh, yeah thanks for watching thanks for listening uh, hope to see some kind of conversation about this because I would like to explore this a little bit more because I do get stereotyped as you know the Lovecraft guy so everything I do you know and it all started when I bought my copy on August 2010 when I went to my bookstore and said hey uh, I would like to buy a copy of the Necronomicon guy goes in back Brings out the collected, the the, uh, the black Eldridge collection. I'm like, as much as I would like to have that one, but not that one. He's like, oh, you meant the real one. Pulls it out from under the cashier, or the the thing that you know you exchange money with, and you get a receipt out of it. That thing. So, uh, that didn't sound good. So I'm going to go. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.